did you catch all of these hidden gems in The Little Mermaid? Hey there, fellow Disney enthusiasts! Have you ever wondered what hidden treasures lie beneath the surface of the iconic The Little Mermaid live-action adaptation? Well, we're diving deep to unveil some enchanting details you might have missed during your underwater adventure. But before we set sail, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you never miss out on fascinating Disney insights like these. Now, let's start our journey through the hidden wonders of The Little Mermaid. Number 14. The La Poisson Song is Missing, and for good reason. Because this movie is a real-life version of a classic cartoon, Rob thought the Le Poisson part should be removed, he explained to The Hollywood Reporter. It's like a section from a cartoon you watch on Saturday mornings. If we had filmed it, I don't even know how. It wouldn't fit in. It's also not connected to the main story and doesn't add anything to it. Number 13. The island that Eric and his family live on is probably Jamaica. There are hints that suggest this. We understand the story happens in the Caribbean, which is near where Eric mentions places in the map room scene. The steel drums played in the market scene, and Sebastian's way of speaking also shows this. Among the many islands there, it could be Jamaica, Puerto Rico, or St. Lucia, since Eric talks about a rainforest on the island. In the beginning of the movie, Eric and his crew see a Spanish galleon. This means his people are not controlled by the Spanish government, so it's likely that the island is Jamaica. This makes sense because Jamaica was ruled by the British around the 17th century, and we hear British accents in the movie too. Number 12. Near the beginning of the movie, Ariel uses a large mirror to ensnare a shark and swim away with it. This not only proves that Ariel is brave, but also smart and able to find solutions. We see this again in the movie when she faces Ursula. Number 11. The Disney intro is Little Mermaidified. In the start of the movie, the Disney Castle introduction plays the song Part of Your World instead of the usual song When You Wish Upon a Star. The castle also changes from the regular Disney castle to Eric's castle. Number 10. Ursula's tentacles are bioluminescent. As Colleen explained, the tentacles that glow in the dark were great for her dark environment. Having those lights around her was a clever idea. And she's a bit of a showgirl at heart, right? She's definitely a showgirl, but there's more to the glowing tentacles. This kind of adaptation is often found in creatures of the deep sea, like anglerfish who use it to attract prey. This makes sense considering Ursula is the movie's villain. It's also seen in organisms that live in the deep parts of the ocean where sunlight can't reach, which is why Ariel needs to swim down to reach Ursula's place. Number 9. Ariel is grabbed by a starfish with eyes instead of by shrunken merpeople. Do you remember the small merpeople in the 1989 version of the movie? Well, they're not in this version anymore. Instead, as Ariel swims to Ursula's place, sea creatures with eyes grab her. This is more like the 1837 fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen. In the fairy tale, as the little mermaid swims to the sea witch's home, she sees polyps, which are creatures that are part plant and part human. They reach out and capture anything they can. Along the way, she also sees bones and skeletons, the remains of sailors and merpeople that the polyps caught and trapped. This also happens in the live action movie. Number 8. The film makes it clear that Ursula used to live in the palace and that she is Triton's sister. We don't really know much about what happened between them, except Ariel mentions that her brother thinks Ursula causes problems between humans and merfolk. I think this means we really should have an Ursula backstory, like Maleficent's, and we should have had it a long time ago. Number 7. Ariel falls for Eric's sense of adventure, rather than just his looks. In the cartoon movie, it's easy to see that Ariel falls in love with Eric as soon as she sees him. She even says she loves him to her father, even though they haven't talked yet. But in this version, Ariel doesn't immediately fall for him when she sees him. Instead, she feels a connection with Eric's desire for adventure. That's what makes her interested in him. Number 6. When she first sees Eric, Ariel hides in a lifeboat, which is a way more practical hiding place than in the 1989 version. 
Screen Rant mentioned that in the 1989 movie, Ariel sees Eric while she's on a basic wooden platform. This isn't a very good spot to stay hidden. On the other hand, a lifeboat provides walls and sometimes a cover to hide beneath. It also keeps you safe and protected. Later in the movie, the same lifeboat is used by the sailors and Max, the dog, when the ship begins to sink. Number 5. King Triton's Crown is Made From Shark Teeth the people in charge of designing the Mer people's clothes really wanted everything they wore to come from the sea. But they had a hard time creating King Triton's crown. They wanted it to look like a crown but not like a crown from above the water, which was a challenge. Colleen, who works on costumes, explained to Vogue magazine that they struggled with this. Then she got an idea from looking at a magazine with big shark teeth. She thought they could use these teeth to make the crown. So, the costume team made fake shark teeth and used seaweed to create the base of the crown. After that, they covered it with gold. Number 4. The fishtails of the king's daughters represent different fish from across the world. You might have noticed that Ariel's sisters look and sound very different from each other. This is because they represent various made-up oceans from around the world. But what you may have missed is that their tails are designed to look like different tropical fish. The person who designed the costumes, Colleen Atwood, talked about it to Vogue magazine. She said, I try to take all the different fishes and make them a part of the ocean world. The patterns on real fish are so amazing and beautiful. According to The Little Mermaid, Guide to Merfolk, the sisters' tail designs were inspired by certain fish like the Bimaculatus antheus, Emperor Angelfish, Altum Angelfish, Red Texas Cichlid, Mandarin Dragonet, and Potter Leopard's Wrasse. Number 3. And Scuttle is no longer a seagull, she's a gannet now. Director Rob Marshall explained to IndieWire that the change in the movie had a simple reason. He wanted Ariel to stay beneath the water until the exact moment when she finally comes up above the surface. She's always followed that rule, he said. So, when she does break it, it becomes a really important and exciting moment. If she goes up and down a lot, it's not as special. However, this decision meant that Scuttle needed to be underwater instead. They decided that Scuttle would become a diving bird, and Ariel would talk to her beneath the water. Rob added, We considered different options, but the northern gannet seemed fun and a great fit for Aquafina. These birds can stay underwater for a long time before coming back up. Now, you might wonder why Scuttle is a female, well, it's not a big deal. And it's also because Aquafina, who voices Scuttle, is a woman. Number 2. Flounder is not actually a flounder, and he's not a guppy either. Although his name is Flounder, the connections between our favorite Disney friend and the real flatfish in the sea are limited. Flounder actually resembles a type of fish called a sergeant major. They have similar appearances and are both from the same part of the world where the movie is set. Just so you know, even in the animated version, he wasn't truly a flounder fish. Number 1. Ariel has locks in the movie because that's how Holly likes to wear her hair. Holly, the actress who plays Ariel, talked about why they chose to give Ariel red hair while keeping her natural locks. She said in interviews that it was really important for her to show her real hair in the movie. She has had locks since she was 5 years old, so they are a big part of her identity. She mentioned, It's necessary for us to be able to see people like ourselves. To make Ariel's appearance, Holly got her natural roots colored red and covered her locks with the same red color you see in the movie. So, that's it for today. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to get all the latest updates.